Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give the video a like. Also, I'm thrilled to announce that I've got a Telegram channel and a Patreon where you can enjoy exclusive content ahead of its YouTube release. Check the description or comments for the links. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Shinobi Mage Part 4 Sitting under the shade of the tree, I admired the view of the blossoming flowers and the butterflies fluttering above them, on the wings of which pollen glistened in the rays of the rare sunlight that barely made its way through the crown of the trees. A tiger purred under my right side, and I stroked its neck, fingering its incredibly soft fur. This calmed me down and put me in a good mood, driving away negative feelings and thoughts. And they were, because when they got into this world and because of the huge amount of new information and, in general, everything new, I became somehow, strange and emotional, impetuous and sometimes stupid. I don't regret what happened, but I shouldn't have forgotten who I am. I'm a magician, not a ninja. But having learned about this world in the memory of the local inhabitants, he became too emotional and surrendered headlong into the madness of curiosity, the curse of all magicians. And that's wrong. Now that I have returned after that trip to the land of wind and performing the purification ritual, some of my naivety and stupid decisions are still visible before my eyes, but a lot could have been avoided, but I'm still happy with what happened. Because now I have purpose and opportunities. Shukaku showed me my way. And when I pass it, I can again plunge into the flow of feelings and hormonal instability. But not now. And therefore, I prepared for the trip to the Three Tales in the best possible way. After all, from the memory of the shinobi it follows that the biju will not simply be left behind. And they will obviously try to seal it or subjugate it. And then I won't have a chance to become a full-fledged archmage, and now I have this chance. Sighing, I looked into the eyes of the tiger who turned his head at my sigh and nodded to him and stood up. It's time to get down to business. Raising his head, he looked at the distant sky, barely visible through the leaves, along which white clouds were running. Wait for me, Sila, I'm coming. Shaking off the sticky blades of grass from my green robe, I grabbed the staff that had jumped into my hand from the effort of telekinesis and mentally called out to the forest. He immediately responded with a feeling of goodwill and questioning. I gave him the image of the lake where Isobu now lives. And a path appeared from the grass in front of me. It's still good that the desired lake is located in the forest, this eliminates many problems. Two wolves stepped onto the path in front of me, I followed, two more of the same wolves and one of medium size appeared behind me. The path moved quite quickly in space, and I constantly mentally thanked my half-elf mentor for the lessons he taught me. After all, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have such a strong and powerful ally as the forest. And they don't know how my life in this world would have developed without him. Probably even the gods. Well, except for the goddess of fate, this one knows everything, but is silent. After the purification ritual, I asked the tower for a staff, which was created along with it and was, in essence, a conductor of its energy. With him it will be much easier for me to cast spells. And the ability to summon tower guards is also a very good thing. Especially if you think about the elementals that guard the stove. Those guys can even give a beating to a biju if necessary. In addition, the embodiment of the elements is extremely difficult to kill. That's why I took one of these elementals with me. And since we are going to the lake, the water elemental will be there just right. And he will help with isobu, and he will give strong blows to others in his element with the possibility of death. I also changed my clothes to a magician's robe, and she will have better protection for me, and will not restrict my movements. And the set of extremely useful enchantments only swayed me more towards choosing this clothing. The tower went to great lengths to create these clothes for me. Most likely she wanted to feel needed. And yes, the mage tower is a pseudo-intelligent structure that becomes intelligent over time. Now she is at the level of a five-year-old child in terms of development, but this will not last long. With such a flow of energy that the tower receives from the vein, it develops at an incredibly fast pace. So soon I will have to deal with her whims, as the tower will begin adolescence. And don't ask me how this is possible, because I have no idea. After five hours of walking, the trail took me to the shore of a forest lake covered in fog, and this despite that it is almost three o'clock in the afternoon. Looking around, I didn't notice anyone. And the feeling of the forest indicated that there were no intelligent people around the lake. The wolves, immediately leaving the path, dispersed into the thickets, disappearing from view. And how do they do it with their size and color? Magic, probably. Well, our chakra. 
I haven't studied this issue. Deciding not to put off resolving the issue with the biju indefinitely, I walked to the water itself and lowered the head of the staff into it, releasing the construct for summoning a water elemental into it. Five minutes later, I felt a sharp outflow of mana from the aura, and the water suddenly foamed and began to bubble, as if boiling. Call completed. The turbulence of the water stopped, and I felt elemental attention. There is an unusual inhabitant in this lake. Huge and strong. Basically a creature of the energy type, but the energy is materialized. I need you to drive him to this place. The attention smelled of agreement, and it disappeared. Although the water did not undergo any more changes or unusualness. Still the same smooth surface in the fog. Having moved a few meters from the shore, I activated many weaves that I had prepared in advance for this matter and all the grass around me instantly disappeared, the earth was compacted almost to stone density and signs and geometric figures of a ritual containment spell began to appear on it. Here I won't have such a great bonus as Shuakaku. Namely, the seal that restrains the monster. So I made something of my own, based on magic. Of course, this figure is unlikely to hold back Isaba for long, but it should give me the few minutes I need. As soon as I had everything ready, I sat down on the ground and put a blade of grass in my mouth. We didn't have to wait that long. Half an hour later, the water surface near the shore became agitated, and a moment later it literally exploded, releasing a giant turtle-like monster with three tails with whips. I instantly jumped up and stuck my staff into the center of the prepared figure, activating the trap and pointing it at the monster. The figure flashed with blue light and activated, and the mutant turtle was immediately engulfed in a force field from all sides. The monster didn't even seem to notice this, making only one of all the movements. He opened his eye. Left. No spell. Crap. It seems I'm having problems, and they really appeared, since the spell was felt in the second eye, which the monster had closed with an armored eyelid, and it's sealed to boot. The matter has become somewhat more complicated. Therefore, I ordered the elemental to begin restraining the monster as soon as the containment spell stopped working. Leaving the staff in the pentagram, I rush towards this strange turtle, going into combat concentration. While I'm running towards him, I see columns of water rising up from the water around Isobu and clasping the monster like tentacles, completely swaddling him, but leaving his head open. Having reached it, I was quietly shocked by the size of the creature. For comparison, I will fit completely into the open eye of this monster, as well as two more of me in height. Are you impressed? So I was impressed, but I didn't think to stop. The monster reacted to the attack of water as it should, starting to try to escape and growling loudly. However, it was useless, the spell and the elemental restrained Isabah reliably. Using chakra, jumping onto his face, I immediately jumped to his closed eye and examined it with magical vision. And then he cursed loudly. A burst of energy was pumped into the ceiling of the eye, and the spell that was felt through the eyelid, despite the ceiling, was clearly much more complex than what Shuakaku had. And this spell was based on one word of honor. Unlike the ceiling technique. Feeling swearing at the moron Rakuto, I take a kanai from my belt and slash my hand, wincing in pain. I don't like this section of magic, although I recognize its effectiveness and power. But I still don't like it. Blood magic is one of the most powerful aspects of magic, but due to the fact that you need to bleed yourself or the victim, I really don't like it. However, this is the only direction of magic that acted quickly and with remarkable power. So there is no choice. Having collected my own blood with difficulty into my palm, I splash it onto the crack of the monster's eyelid. At the same time, trying to stay on the head of Isobu, who was shaking it from side to side. Another attraction. Having difficulty reading the required recitative, I see how the blood on the three-tailed eye began to glow and quickly evaporate. A barely visible wave passed across the eyelid and the slit of the eye began to open very slowly. And I was tossed from side to side, trying very hard to throw the monster off its face. However, chakra and hands, tightly clinging to the scales of the monster, did not allow me to break free yet. The blood from Isobu's eyelid continued to evaporate, and the eyelid opened too slowly, but still opened and I held on to his character with all my strength. And just when I thought that the job had failed, the monster's eyelid opened enough for me to stick my hand in there. However, this was not so easy to do. My hands, which were holding on to the growths on the monster's armor, simply refused to unclench. And I myself was not eager to fly down, but there was no choice. Somehow overcoming my fear and tearing one hand off the armor, which almost cost me a flight into the unknown, 
I managed to get it into the slit of the monster's eyelids and start the spell scanning procedure. And what was revealed to me almost made me growl with anger. A broken spell is, of course, still a horror. But damn, it turns out that this monster's eye itself is extremely unusual, and he really interfered with my work. But the spell in the monster's eye was many times more difficult than Shukaku's, moreover, it made me nervous that if the blood evaporated faster than I had time to do everything, my hand would be completely crushed. Having spat on everything, he gave an order to the elemental and he instantly twisted the monster's head, slamming it into the shore of the lake and fixing it there. It has become much easier to hold on, however, the outflow of energy to maintain the elemental has increased, which is not good. However, once you start doing it, you have to do it well. And therefore. A moment, and my brain began to accelerate, everything outside slowed down for my perception many times, but this was not important, since I was now literally disassembling the monster's spell into its component parts and figuring out what and why it was. So, here are the structure containment modules, here are the appearance modules, here are the mind suppression modules and the behavior model. Damn that stupid Rakuto. What did he do to the poor piece of Demiurge? His hands should be torn off. It took me subjectively as much as half an hour to disassemble the structure of this incomplete spell and rebuild it, removing a whole mountain of unnecessary rubbish. Because of this, the spell has seriously decreased in complexity, but has added in reliability and durability. As soon as I activated the modified spell, the monster froze, and I stuck out my hand as quickly as possible, shining with rainbow light from the monster's eye, and jumped from his hari to the ground. Wow! It started to move to the sides, and I sat down right where I was standing. And Isobu froze. His open eye, right before his eyes, turned from red to yellow, and then closed. And the monster himself relaxed. I gave an order to the elemental and its water tentacles fell in streams of water, and the elemental itself hid. Nothing happened for ten minutes, and I was trying to catch my breath from the rodeo that the monster gave me, when suddenly a voice was heard from behind me. Sasori, look. We came here to scout out the situation, to think about how to lure the three tails out, and here it is, he lies right in front of us on the bank and sleeps. The leader will be pleased, yes. Didera, is that all you noticed? A second voice was heard. Uh. And what else? The voice of the first, and the fact that a strange guy in a green cloak fought with the three tails and seems to have won, doesn't mean anything to you. Um. Yes. That is okay. Since he fought with the three tails, it means he was exhausted. I will blow it up in the name of the great art. Wastefulness. The second voice was typed. I'd rather make a new doll out of him. After all, since he defeated the Biju, he is strong enough to become my new doll. No. I'll blow it up, yeah. No. I'll make a new doll out of him. These two were bickering, and I was quietly freaking out that they were sharing the skin of the unkilled me. And fury rose in my soul. Jumping to his feet, he pulled the staff towards him with telekinesis and turned to those who were speaking. It was that other couple. A blue-eyed blonde man in a black cloak with red clouds and some strangely bent man in a straw hat in the same cloak as the first one. The blonde had a crossed-out village protector on his forehead. Stone Nukanen. And I even know who they are. And their conversation confirms the guesses. These two were none other than Didera and Sasori. Nukanen of Stone and Suna. Power level. S rank Junin. In addition, there is a very decent reward for them. Even those maniacs. Now I was glad that Isobu and I did not need the combat spells I had prepared. However, the sad thing was that I spent a considerable amount of mana and would not be able to fight with them for a long time. And even with two at once. The wolves were in ambush just waiting for the order to attack. However, I didn't need to do anything. Just like the wolves. Since Isobu woke up, he opened his left eye and looked at all three of us at once. Damn, this is an eye. Opa. Sasori, it seems we will have to put aside our differences on the discussion and decide this later. The big turtle woke up. I see. The puppeteer answered him. And I. I now felt a strange feeling. Because water spectrum mana was pumped into my core at tremendous speed. A strange energy channel stretches towards the SCC. And then a calm baritone sounded in my head. Thank you for helping me, magician. Are these two bothering you? I just nodded my head. It's not a problem. And I saw the incredible. Isobu's second eye began to open. And just by looking at the enemies, Shinju learned everything about them, 
and the enemies understood that they had lost. It thundered in my head, and then the eyelid of Isobu's right eye opened completely and Isobu's second eye looked out at the world. Unlike the left one, which was red, it was steel gray in color and had three concentric circles around the pupil, in which nine tomo were spinning in different directions. The creator's gaze. Commentary on part 13. Isobu the three tails. Hmm. It seems to me that some of it is not very good. What do you think? Partial changes are possible, including complete rewrites. Web links JPEG GG. Web links shop, attachments, SC, products underscore pictures, rod percent 20 Amit. Underscore ENL dot JPG GG's staff. Only the crystal is green with a light green glow. Web links Lizels.1b point one B slash zero underscore five ab sixty five underscore ed five e two a nine f underscore ridge dot JPG picture of a staff from reader. Web links underscore tails underscore by underscore gory verde d five pw six meters o dot jpg three tailed isobu closed eye isobu rinisharing and shinju eye of the demiurge https colon slash slash img dot youtube dot com slash v slash qf and bam nine capeco slash hq default dot jpg link to yandex wallet for those who want to give the author doshirik and speed up the release of the product https colon slash slash money dot yandex dot ru slash to slash four one zero zero one five one seven three seven three one two eight two for other ways to thank the author see my profile part 14 easy swing with a change in the landscape and a new meeting the creator's gaze isobu's voice finished in my head and the world around me and i myself was shaken by a feeling of power wow was the demiurge's gaze sealed into Isobu. Impressive. But if the eye had not been sealed from the beginning, then one could safely say that all those who would like to subjugate or seal this monster could safely dig their own grave before going on a hike, because no one could defeat him. What the hell, huh? Sasori, do you see this? It's an eye like our bosses. Didera was slightly surprised, putting his hands into his pouches. Didera, you again do not notice the obvious. The eyes are similar, but it's not them. Our boss has them differently. Sasori answered. Oh. Well then it's not scary. Now, if they were like our bosses, then it would be really scary, yes. Wasting no time, I rushed towards Isobu, placing a barrier behind me. And this turned out to be the right decision, since literally a second later explosions were heard from behind. The barrier held, but was ready to burst at any moment from over voltage. Hurry up and climb on top of my head. A voice sounded in my head. My attacks are too powerful if you if you don't be on my body, you will simply be destroyed. And I increased my speed, and behind me, as if from the void, a line of black flame formed, delaying the pursuers and Didara's bombs. As soon as I was on Isobu's head, I felt an internal blow to the magic core and the SCH. Synchronization is complete. Isobu said quite a bit, but not in my head, but simply with his mouth. Well, I'm finally free. As soon as Isobu tore his head off the shoreline, Didera and Sasori jumped onto the demolition bird's clay bird and rushed towards us. Hey. Useless. Isobu said, and behind the two flying nukin in the space suddenly shook in a completely black hole form. Singularity. And then a wave of distortion erupted from the hole, the earth and air trembled, and then began to be drawn into the singularity with great speed. The wind howled, the ground rumbled and the cobblestones collided in flight and my veins began to tremble. This is the attack of the first circle. Weak of course, but still. I can't imagine what she would do to me. I feel that these Nukunans will not be able to fight against such Isobu. Didera tried to resist, but his bird was pulled more and more into the gap of the singularity. But Sasori stood out, shooting his hands towards the rock. Steel cables trailed behind his hands and when his hands grabbed the rock, he began to pull himself and Didera and the bird out of the singularity field. Isobu. Do you have anything to blow up that rock? I asked the Biju with interest. No problem. The three tails answered and in a second created an absolutely black ball of terribly unstable chakra near his mouth, and then this ball went to rock. A moment and I had to hide from the blast wave behind the ridges of Isobu's armor. Although I was still pretty hard pressed. I was shocked. This is power. Now that's power. There was literally nothing left of the rock. However, Due to Isobu creating the Biju bomb, he lost control of the singularity and it began to collapse. 
and therefore the two Nuknans were lucky. Well, relatively speaking. They did not fall into a black hole, thrown away from the rock by an explosion, but only onto fragments of rocks and stones that fell to the ground after the gravitational field disappeared. Hum, we've corrected the landscape. Didera remained lying down, but the puppeteer began to get up with a crunch and grinding sound. Eh, hey, got it. Isobu, can you become smaller? I asked the mutant turtle. I can go into your inner world. Self-sealing. However, then you will be left alone with your opponents. I won't stay. As you want. Isobu answered and, turning into blue plasma, incredibly quickly pulled himself into me. And I felt how my energy reserve was filling up at an incredible speed. This is it. By the way, Isobu. I turned mentally to the biju, while at the same time flying into the water from a considerable height. What part of the creator are you? Wisdom and vision. I heard a voice in my head. And don't distract me for a while, you have a real mess here in your inner world. Hum, if you were wisdom. Then why did you disappear when I was on your head? 50 meters above water level. Of course, I was afraid, but not much. Uh. Excuse me? The turtle answered guiltily. Isobu, you idiot. I answered him, at the same time giving an order to the elemental. A moment and I fall into the water. Incredible pain shot through me. But I still felt how the elemental picked me up, and in a flash of blue light we disappeared, transported to my tower and then, darkness. I woke up lying on something hard and clearly not intended for lying on. My whole body ached terribly, and a bell was ringing like an alarm in my head. It was as if something had died in my mouth, and obviously for a long time. Opening my eyes, I saw a distant ceiling and a glow. Through the pain in my head the thought broke through that this was the ceiling above the slab of the base of the tower. Which means I'm safe. This thought made it a little easier. Very little. Gathering his strength, he began to weave a healing spell, but it only worked about the tenth time. Then the pain began to recede, as did the negative sensations. But the sound of crunching bones in my body was a little annoying. Apparently he broke several bones in the fall. Damn, I strengthened my body with chakra, and still such damage? Unfortunately I fell. Somehow, after the fifth time, I was able to get up. Dried the wet robe instantly. Nothing complicated, a tenth circle spell. Then he examined the place where he was lying and did not find the staff. Apparently, he stayed on that lake. Well, that's okay. Tower. Call my staff please. I squeezed out of my throat with difficulty. I was incredibly thirsty. Orochimaru's pav I stood on the shore of the lake where the three-tailed creature lived and twirled a strange weapon in my hand. Metal, with a glowing green crystal at the top, framed by metal branches and leaves. At the bottom, this one and a half meter staff ended in a leaf-shaped tip. Very spicy. And it was not possible to determine the composition of this metal by eye. The strange weapon reeked of uncertainty and mystery, which made my heart beat faster and my body tremble in anticipation of solving this puzzle. Orochimaru-sama. Kabuto, standing next to me, called me. I'm listening, Kabuto-kun. Orochimaru-sama, based on traces and scraps of fabric, managed to establish some picture of what happened. Speak. I said, regretfully turning my gaze to my student and useful boy. The first fight between an unknown person and Isobu took place here. Biju lost. Then a couple from Akatsuki appeared here. And here I can't understand the traces. Either a battle began between the unknown and Akatsuki, or everyone against the awakened three tails. But the fact remains that whoever fought against the three tails, they lost and with difficulty they left the battlefield. One of the Akatsuki was seriously injured, as blood was found, as well as bandages. Hum. Is that all? Raised an eyebrow. Not really. From the traces of destruction and observation crystals from our laboratory, we were able to find out that the three tails used attacks previously unknown to anyone. These attacks are inherent. Rinnegan. I cut him off. I already know all this myself. I'm interested in the one who fought the three tails at the very beginning and won. Did you find anything? Apart from this strange weapon that you were holding in your hands, no other traces were found. Well, except that the three tails was sealed after all. Coo 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 coo. I laughed, smiling contentedly. New mysteries, new personalities. I love this. Let's go to the laboratory. I want to quickly start studying this strange weapon. 
I already wanted head towards my secret laboratory when the weapon in my hands trembled and began to be enveloped in a lilac glow. About. What is this? I began to look at the radiance, and then I felt the weapon twitch in my hands, but I did not let go of it and grabbed it with my other hand. The new jerk was stronger and I was dragged a whole meter. And the strengthening with chakra and the fact that I was clinging to the ground with threads did not help. Kabuto. Help. This weapon is trying to escape from me. Kabuto immediately grabbed the weapon in a free place and. His eyes were blinded by a lilac flash. Then I felt my feet hit a hard surface and almost fell, but was able to stand. The weapon disappeared from his hands. I hope Kabuto didn't miss him, otherwise I'll assign him a couple of experiments. Not fatal, but quite unpleasant. Cuckoo. Hum. Someone grunted to the side. Tower, I asked for a staff, not a staff and two living, humanoid additions to it. As soon as I was able to see normally, I was quite surprised. I stood in the middle of a strange slab, completely covered with complex geometric figures and signs unknown to me, which shone with an otherworldly light. Kabuto sat next to him. I couldn't resist. He did not have a staff in his hands. He was found in the hands of a 16-year-old boy standing a little to the side. And a strange energy emanated from the boy. Tremendous energy and strength. And the surrounding space pressed oppressively on me. The boy looked at me with light green eyes, with a slight smile on his lips. His hair was the color of blood, which said a lot, but the most important thing was that he was an Uzumaki. However, they did not have green eyes. Half-breed? And who are you? The guy asked. Coo 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 coo. How interesting. It came out of my mouth. Everything around me made me feel a burning curiosity and excitement of exploration. We need to study everything here. Hum hum. Can't you hear me, or what? And the guy is annoying. What do you want? I told him. Get out. And I need to study everything here carefully. What uncultured guests? The boy sadly shook his head. The owner of this place was not greeted. Kicked out of their own home. Tower. After the last word, I was suddenly overcome by unbearable pain, as was Kabuto, who was sitting next to me. I fell to the floor with a groan and, with an effort of will, turned off my nerve endings. However, this did not help. Whatever happens to us, this impact affects not only the nerve endings, but also the brain, chakra, central nervous system and much more. But after a couple of moments the pain went away. Well, let's try to greet each other again. A strange guy asked us with a smile. Welcome to my tower. Here I am a king and almost a god. So I don't recommend being stupid, nor do I recommend being arrogant. My name is Archibald. And who are you? Something flashed in my head about a similar name, but I didn't have time to catch this thought. Answered the guy Kabuto. I am Kabuto, Orochimaru sensei's student. And he pointed at me with his hand, saying that Orochimaru is me. Oh how? The boy was surprised. Yes, it turns out that the Sanin Orochimaru himself visited me, Nukanan scientist. As they say, a sadist, a masochist and someone who behaves strangely in the presence of cute boys. Hum, these words caused irritation to rise in my chest. Watch your words, brat. Oh how. He raised his hands in front of him and suddenly his face turned into an impassive mask. And the staff whirled in his hands with a whistle. Aren't you just a little crazy? You came in without permission, you are insolent, you are rude and you are trying to download your rights. But I can kill you without much effort. After all, you have come to a place where literally everything is under my control. And the next moment both me and Kabuto broke out in a sweat. Because we felt as if something incredibly powerful was looking at us. This feeling didn't come from the guy, it came from everywhere. And it literally screamed that this creature didn't like us. And my feeling of trouble literally screamed that it was time to get out. And I got used to trusting him. Not once saved. Guy. I'm sorry that I can't say your name, it's difficult to pronounce, but I don't want to distort it. But where are we? I tried to change things and find out some useful information. You were in my tower. You were dragged along with the staff. It's okay. Few people can pronounce it. Now goodbye. The forest is unhappy with your presence here. The strange guy waved his hand at us, and we were again blinded by the lilac flash, and when we blinked, we saw that we were standing on the shore of the lake. The same one we were on earlier. Orochimaru-sama. What was all that? And who was it that could use spatial techniques so easily? A confused Kabuto asked me. No idea. And it makes me angry. 
I answered him. Let's go to the laboratory. My pocket was pleasantly warmed by a flask with samples of the material from which the staff was made. It's good that I provided different options and took some material from it for analysis. New discoveries await me. Ku 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 ku. End Pav Orochimaru. Commentary on Part 14. Easy swing with a change in the landscape and a new meeting. A small sale in honor of those who transferred money to me, thank you very much. As for me, the weak part, but nothing else came to mind. What do you think? Write comments with your views on the part. Link to Yandex Wallet. For those who want to give the author Doshirik, and speed up the release of the product, https colon slash slash money dot yandex dot ru slash to slash four one zero zero one five one seven three seven three one two eight two for other ways to thank the author see my profile part 15 senin i stood and looked at the analyzing network which with great speed was showing me changes in my core and in my body in general and the more i looked the more amazed i was since the instability of my position threatened to result in considerable trouble in particular, to the explosion of the body, and the formation of a layer of my flesh on the nearest surfaces. This is of course not certain, but anything is possible. Sighing, and moving away from the table with the working analyzing weave, he wandered towards the table, where the equipment is adapted to work with different types of energy. And with destructive ones too. Having activated the table's protection, he placed his hand on the circle on the right side and began to pour in mana until a crystal shimmering with blue-green light formed in the center crystallized mana. With a light telekinetic send, he moved the stone along the guides into the upper hole and placed a new receiving plate in the recess. An ordinary looking plate with a centimeter diameter and a silver color, one millimeter thick. A pentagram of energy acceptance and storage is carefully carved on it. In fact, the simplest energy storage device. Moreover, it is neutral. That is, it can contain different types of energy. True, I haven't tried to connect it with chakra yet. But as they say, trying is not torture. Having checked the protective fields once again, he placed his second hand on the left circle and began to slowly release chakra from both hands. How to explain the chakra coming out of your hands? And this process itself? Yes easy. Take a balloon and a needle pierce it in several places. Then fill with water and voila. Streams of water flow merrily out of the holes. Now repaint this water azure and here it is, an action absolutely similar to releasing chakra from your hands. These small streams of energy were captured by the field and sent along a groove cut into the table to the central recess with the plate. As soon as the energy entered the central recess, the plate glowed with orange figures and began to absorb this energy. It's good that it didn't explode. Even though there are protective fields for such a case, it doesn't matter. Although I was tense, yes. But one thing seemed strange to me. The plate absorbed too much chakra, but no crystal was formed. Strange. Looking at the steadily and calmly flowing energy, I increased the pressure of the chakra coming out of my hands, to which the chakra channels in the hands responded with a slight tingling sensation. This means that it is not worth giving more pressure. Ten minutes later, the situation began to stress me out. After all, I already had quite a bit of chakra left in the SCC, but the plate didn't even think about creating a crystal. Having stopped the supply of chakra, I called up the scanning graphs that lit up in front of me, and began to call up the indicators, and they puzzled me, to put it mildly. According to the analyzer, the plate was filled with unknown energy by only a quarter. And all this in 10 minutes of constant downloading. So I called up the energy leakage data. It turned out that there was no loss of chakra through the transmission channels. But then how is this possible? Scratching the back of his head, he shrugged and continued the infusion of chakra, but reducing the supply by half simultaneously connecting to the tower's gateways so as not to collapse from the exhaustion of the central station. Only an hour later, the record was finally saturated with this energy and the weaves in the analyzer crystallized it and moved it to the lower storage slot. Moving away from the table, he went to the nearest washbasin and rinsed his face. Then I walked to the central observation window and checked on Isobu, who had left my inner world to bask in the sun this strange turtle with human hands was sleeping in the central square of the tower and a whole bunch of various birds were sitting on it. Some even began to weave nests on its shell. Hum. Here's the demon. Walking over to the coffee table, he took a pre-prepared sandwich with smoked meat and took a savory bite. I chewed it slowly and washed it down with cooled coffee. 
And then, returning the bitten sandwich to the plate, he went back to the energy analyzer. Approaching and looking at the data given out, he chuckled in puzzlement. After all, the analyzer claimed that chakra differs from mana in energy saturation and concentration. It is not as heavy as mana, and at the same time, easier to manage and change. That's why I had to learn for a long time to control it, since both their method and control system are somewhat different. Shrugging at this, he placed another plate in the central recess and, sighing, began an experiment on mixing energies. A small stream of energy came from the top crystal with mana. At the same time, energy from the azure chakra stone began to flow from the lower one. Tensing, I followed the two streams of energy and noticed that I had squeezed the corner of the table until it creaked with excitement. And so two energies simultaneously entered the plate in the central recess and nothing. The plate saturation began to rise. 12%, 34%, 51% and then, after half the volume, a white fur-bearing animal appeared. No, there was no explosion. However, what happened to the plate did not add joy to me. She was petrified. Just once, and it's made of stone. The analyzer produced some data and disposed of the stone plate. Swallowing, I looked at the graphs with the analyzer's proposal and saw proposals for injecting different amounts of energy. Soulless brute. Moving away from the table again, he returned to the sandwich and coffee. After eating the sandwich, I sighed and went back to the analyzer. Four days. Four damn and nervous days. I wasted my nerves and poured liters of sweat into the environment, barely slept and began to resemble a vampire. And now, like an idiot, I'm screaming with happiness and running around the laboratory with a lilac stone. As soon as the euphoria ended, I returned to the energy analyzer and began checking the report. Yeah, yeah. In short, the problem with mixing chakra and mana was that they have different consistencies and therefore different amounts of the two energies were needed to form this. And this is what we have, a lilac crystal with a completely new type of energy. What a discovery. What a discovery. Yes, they would drag me to the conference for half a century if I discovered something like that in my world. I ran around the laboratory excitedly. And then he froze. What the fuck discovery, idiot. Grabbing his head, he immediately returned to the analyzer and began looking at graphs of the difference in the amount of energy for such an effect. Yeah, that means for one mana crystal, you need 10 crystals with chakra. And this means that you need 100 measures of mana and chakra. To beat. A thousand. Where can I dig up so much for you? Having sent the data from this table to the analyzing weave, I began to wait for the verdict. Analysis is underway. The correlation has been found. The effect of obtaining unknown energy has been found. Adaptation for the carrier is underway. Waiting time, 12 hours. The analyst broke me off. A special weaving that can analyze anything. However, it requires a lot of time and input data. After standing for about 10 minutes at the analyst, which is a 2-meter obelisk with a simply unreadable number of small weaves, I shrugged my shoulders and went to bed, asking the tower to wake me up as soon as the analysis was completed. As soon as I found myself on the couch, I instantly passed out, and then I woke up to the sound of a siren. Damn it. Damn you. I just lay down. I screamed, jumping up from the floor where I had fallen from beep. The analyzer has finished working. The tower answered indifferently, and my anger instantly disappeared, and I found myself at the obelisk, as if I had teleported. Give me the result, he said, feeling his palms sweating from excitement. Accepted. The analyst responded. Based on the results of studying a new type of energy, a qualitative increase in energy intensity and concentration was identified, which will have a positive effect on the final use of the new type of energy both in spells and in chakra manipulations. A new type of energy allows its carrier to become stronger, faster, more resilient, and raise perception to a much higher quality level. Increase the effect of all spells by two, and in some cases, three times. Strengthen the effect of all chakra manipulations by four times. Oh. Was all I said. Further, however, the wearer's body mutates while exposed to this energy, receiving different body changes. Modeling the effects on your data showed. The eyes change their structure. The final version could not be calculated due to the many different indicators and lack of data, but the resulting effect has an enhancing direction and does not have negative consequences. The hair color changes to black, and sensory perception and general perception also increase. In this case, hair acts as an antenna for receiving the transmission of brain radiation to the outside world, 
which provides new opportunities for perception. In addition to changing color, the hair gains incredible strength. Muscles, tendons, blood and another 60% of indicators in the body also change. The effect is similar to that of demons during reincarnation, but unlike them, it occurs in a matter of moments, which is incredible according to many treatises and calculations of mages scientists. The appearance of the body remains standard, without changing, only minor features are added. Holy shit. That's all I could say to that. Have you made calculations for structural changes to my body and energy structure to stabilize my precarious position? Yes. Calculations have been made. Conclusion. The forced creation of a neutral energy center for mixing energy in the required proportions, and the creation of highways to supply the required energies in standard proportions. And also to isolate two types of energies from each other, so as not to get the petrification effect. Weaving to regulate processes in mutagen for the body are produced. The operation will take 12 standard hours. The floor in the middle of the laboratory trembled and moved to the side, revealing a pool with a nasty-looking green liquid filling it. It is recommended to carry out the procedure as quickly as possible so that the petrification process does not begin. The obelisk continued. No problem. I answered, resolutely heading towards the pool, taking off all my clothes along the way. After all, my life is at stake here, and it's up to me to turn into a piece of stone.